I'd like to take a break from our routine biblical studies and step into what the Bible tells us to do, which says, watch thou in all things, walk circumspectly. In other words, look all around you. Make sure you're checking everything out, not just the things inside your church doors. And some of you who are close to me that know what I've been doing know that I've been studying this Las Vegas shooting pretty heavily. Basically, because the Bible in Deuteronomy 21 tells us we're supposed to investigate spilled blood on our land. And of course, as a dutiful, responsible believer, I believe we should all be doing that, especially since the people that are supposed to be in charge aren't doing a thing to do that. So we as believers have to understand that we're supposed to be ones responsible to look for justice in our land which is the whole concept of the Bible in the first place, which is to teach us how to love one another. But I've been studying this Vegas shooting for a little over two weeks now, maybe almost three weeks here, and looking into it sort of like we did with 9-11 and all the other false flags over the years. And this one's kind of interesting in a way that it's it's got a new twist to it. I've given some of you some information, some links, and some even some videos that I had put together quickly to show some of the research we've found and some of the evidence that shows right off the bat that we knew that the media was lying to us. It wasn't a single lone gunman, a lone wolf shooter, as they have been doing to us that kind of a thing since Lee Harvey Oswald and the JFK assassination. But So we instantly jumped into defense mode and did the research, and a lot of great people on the net are doing the research, putting up videos showing what they believe to be good evidence to prove that the media is wrong in that area, that it was that it was a larger uh, orchestrated event. It wasn't just one crazed man with a bunch of guns. Uh, and so we're looking to find the blood that was spilled. What if, and I'm starting to think, well, maybe, what if there wasn't as much blood spilled as they said there was, and that some of the other things I'm seeing on the net had some validity to it? Well, today being October 23rd, uh, I thought I would start showing you folks a little of what I'm seeing here. Uh, when this first broke, on October 2nd, the day after the shooting, I noticed a clip that a woman said something in the crowd, a young lady said something in the crowd that kind of caught my attention, and I thought, well, she just wasn't used to seeing these things, perhaps, and that was she was possibly too desensitized, being used to watching television. But here's the clip of what she said. I really don't see anybody actually injured. Now, having seen that, I need to go in one ear, not the other, because I knew something happened here, because there was too many people claiming this, claiming that. The bullets are flying everywhere in all the videos and the audios that you're listening to. And so I did see an occasional YouTube claiming that it's a hoax, the whole thing's faked. And I didn't pay a whole lot of attention to that, because I thought, well, no, something happened here. Because I remember back at the 9-11, there was always those people that said there was no planes that ever hit the towers. Well, we know planes did hit the towers, it's just they weren't the same planes that they said were supposed to hit the towers. And so when we understand all these things, and we're starting to understand how they're doing things today, what blew my mind is that after the Sandy Hook episode and the Batman thing in Aurora, Colorado, and some of the other things I've seen, so when I heard 59 dead uh, and, and 500 wounded uh, a couple days later, I said, well, something's really fishy here. Yes, there might be additional shooters. Uh, there was other things going on that just didn't jive with what the mainstream media was telling us. And with my discernment radar going up, I said, well, you know, i got to show people at least that the media is lying. So, I, like I said, I kept showing you folks that it's definitely not a single lone wolf gunman. We know that much. There's definitely something wrong with that. Uh, this Stephen Paddock was obviously a patsy. Uh, some way, shape, or form. Uh, we don't know all the details yet, and it might be years till we see enough evidence to put that together. But in general, we knew something was wrong beyond what the mainstream media was lying to us about. Well, you know that they do drills, they do little things, and they have uh, events where they, like on 9-11, they had the NORAD air drills going on, where they were, they were actually uh, training that in case someone should ever try to in invade our airspace. Uh, well, gee, all of a sudden, you know, here something like that exactly takes place. And of course, then the people that are involved in real time think it's part of the drill and they ignore it. Or they ask about it. They're told that it's part of the drill and they then again ignore it. Well, so things like that are always tied into these false flags. 
on 7-7. If you find the actual BBC broadcast, you'll find out that they, they did the same thing there. Uh, the, the BBC uh, interviewer is asking the expert uh, that was involved in the investigation, uh, uh, what were you doing? He said, oh, we were planning to conduct a drill for this very type of thing uh, that where just in case uh, there was a bombing in the tubes, uh, well, then we'd know what to do. And guess what? Just that very thing exactly happened. And the guy says, you mean that very thing you're planning to do that you're drilling for actually took place? And he said, the guy says, oh, yes, precisely. And it's like, it blows your mind, right? Because, you know, okay, it wasn't a coincidence. It was planned that way. And these people don't even get it who are involved in it. So we know that all these things have taken place. Uh, we, we know that FEMA had arrived before 9-11. So we know that FEMA and Homeland Security were in place in Vegas here now, too. How much did they have a part in it? I thought it was just minor to be there to help coordinate things so they their real event would would quietly happen the right way with enough people in place to keep it from getting out of hand too far. But the more you look into this and the more you realize that people study this more deeply than you do, uh, they have some interesting insight that we don't have. Now, we have biblical discernment, some of us, and of course, we, we then understand something's still missing, so we search deeper, those of us who have a love of the truth. But because I don't have the time to study these events like these folks do, I mean, they study each one religiously, and I, I no pun intended there, but they put as much time into studying these types of false flags and the crisis actors and all these different things with such intensity. It's similar to how much I study the Bible and study you know, history and how the, the scriptures have been switched around and whatnot. So the way I'm looking for the truth in scripture, these folks are looking for that. So I put a lot of trust in some of their uh, research. And then I asked the Father to give me the discernment to help separate some of those things out and it, just as I felt in my heart something was wrong, starting the very first day when that woman said, it doesn't look like there's anybody really injured here, and I didn't see bullets actually impacting people and dropping them to their knees. I didn't see things get knocked over by bullet impacts. I didn't see holes developing uh, from the, the bullets, but you could hear them everywhere, so I thought it, it had to be happening somehow. I never really, it never dawned on me that perhaps there was actually no real bullets in the first place. Maybe there's blanks going on. Uh, well, maybe there's a lot of, and maybe a lot of crisis actors that got the rest of the innocent crowd fired up and scared to start the panic. Somebody was tapped into the sound system. There's no hits. Somebody was tapped into the sound system. There's no hits. Nowhere. It's a sound system. It's a sound system. And so this would account for a lot of the other things. And of course, there are a lot of other videos, and I'll show you a couple of clips here, and we'll call it a day. But I just want you guys to know that if we don't look into these things as believers, as people who claim to love the truth, claim to love Christ, claim to love honesty, truth, and to love one another, if we don't stand for these things, why would we expect the heathen to do it for us? They're not. They're going to go back to whatever they do, which is, you know, do what thou wilt is the whole of the law. So let's, they'll, they'll, they'll just keep saying, let somebody else handle it. I'm going to keep having fun. I'll just go to a different city that's not being raided and I'll do my thing there. See, that's how they, they operate. That's how they think. That's their mindset. It's self versus conscience. Those of us with a conscience, we feel responsible. We want to investigate the spilled blood on our land. That's the way we think because we have a heart for others, not just for self. So it's not just the survival of the, fittest for self, but a survival of those we love coming before self, which drives us. And of course, that's because we have the heart of the Father in us, the heart of the Savior. Now, what I'm going to say here is I've seen a lot of evidences in different directions over the past couple of weeks in studying this out, and I had to put uh, some of my biblical studies aside to, to do more work on these, but I found some fascinating things out. The number one thing I was able to do, of course, was to easily prove that it wasn't a lone wolf gunman. And that's easily provable by a lot of the, a lot of the evidences that you, you can see. But what really got me was yesterday, somebody uploaded a new video that I hadn't seen yet. And it was filmed on October 14th, but it wasn't uploaded until yesterday, at, to the best of my knowledge. I don't think it was up until yesterday. I think yesterday was the first day it was up. And so I caught it the first day it was up. It was a new video. It said new on it. And, uh, of course, it, it raised a firestorm in the 
our communication industry <laughs> with this topic. And I saw a lot of threads, in, and I even read a Reddit thread on this that blew my mind. Even a lot of the Reddit people were very shocked to see what I had seen. What it was, as I'll show you while we're talking here, so it should be on your screen. It's a, a fellow who took a, a, a telescopic lens, a very high quality telescopic lens, and he kind of snooped on what was taking place down on the uh, tarmac where the concert had taken place. And he's filming all around that area from uh, just one floor below where this so-called uh, lone wolf shooter was supposed to have been lodged. And he shot this for about an hour. There's four 15-minute YouTube clips that you can download. And uh, I will uh, put those links uh, in the description on the YouTube if you want to go there. But as you can see, as this is going around, I'm just giving you a few brief clips here and there. You can see there's no bullet holes anywhere. You see the FBI walking around with their... their uh, their clean gear on. They have their little booties on so they don't get anything dirty. And there's other people with the little red trays. Well, those the little red trays that you'll see, they're actually paint trays and they're painting the tarmac back up. What they're exactly doing, I've heard some stories, one thing, one thing, another, and it's just, it's only a day, so there's not a whole lot going around with a lot of evidence as to what's going on there. But in general, the, the overall picture, it, it, it threw chills down my spine. You look for that whole hour, you don't see a single bullet hole in any of the tents, any of the surrounding things, any of the billboards. You don't see bullet holes anywhere. You see a lot of markings on the concrete, on that greenish grayish concrete in front of you that might have been where they marked the bodies that might have been lying, if there were bodies. But if this was all completely staged and faked, and there were no bullets, and they did this in a way to do this, in a, to to scare us to death, to make us think it really happened, hoping to get us to uh, to give up our own gun rights, because these people are getting desperate. They know we're catching on to them. Perhaps they did this in such a way. There was a Hollywood type of a production, and I'm hearing it from other people that feel the same. A Hollywood type production that would scare us into giving up our rights our gun rights. So then they could just move in on us and they won't have to worry anymore. But they're afraid to possibly kill a bunch of people where if it, it blows up in their face, we don't come back and hang them all for what they did. That's just one part of the speculation. Now, if there really were shooters, there might have been one or two shooters. There might have been a lot of pretend ones and it might have been like a hybrid of the both. A, a shooter shooting a couple people so it looked real and maybe, who knows? We're not sure yet. It's only a couple weeks into the investigation of this thing. And of course, we're the only ones investigating. The FBI, the CIA, the Homeland Security, they're not really going to investigate because they were a part of creating it and making it happen. Now, you look at the police chief, and then you look at the FBI director standing behind him. It looks like he's scared to death. Like, he has to play the game. Like, they get a gun to his back of some kind. All these different things just don't add up. What I will say to you is that looking at all this, how are we supposed to determine whether we're safe or not? Well, that's kind of easy if you truly have a faith in the Father. You trust in Him with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. He'll take care of you. He will deliver you. He'll deliver you through all of this. And He'll open us up. The more of us that trust in Him, the more the Father will be able to look at us as a nation and say, yes, maybe now they deserve to have their liberties back. And possibly we might see a change in a turnaround as we see in 2 Chronicles 7.14. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven, will hear their prayers, and I will heal their land. He will heal the land. We don't have to do anything. It's not a political battle, folks. If we get on our knees, accept the fact that he is the lawgiver, he's the one that should be writing our rules for how to get along and how to love one another. And if we start living that, that system, and acknowledging the Father as the great lawgiver, the great legislator, the great judge, the great uh, enforcer, and start living that life with his son as the king of kings. We could inherit the kingdoms of the earth right here and now. The problem is, I think it's quite possible we're not scared enough. A lot of us think, well, I wasn't in Vegas. I'll just keep my fingers crossed that it never happens where I'm at next. But these keep coming faster and harder, don't they? And if this is real... 
What are they going to do next? If it's not real and it was faked, perhaps we're winning this battle, which means you folks don't have to be so scared anymore and you can come help us. <laughs> All right. In general, you think about it this way. Some would say, well, God's punishing Vegas because it's sin city. Well, the Father is going to punish all of us because none of us are standing righteously. And, and I'd say I, I'm, I'm included. I'm not, I'm not worthy of his salvation either. I'm, I, I make mistakes myself. But what better city to stage such a violent-looking act of gun terror in, in the first place but Vegas, where everyone in that whole city knows not to go against the gambling bosses or do anything that would make waves, right? The whole city would zip up, clam up, and do exactly as they're told, including perhaps the poor officers that are trying, possibly, trying to get the truth out, and they're afraid to, because they know they'd have lawsuits against them, that have uh, the, the, the bullies all over them, that lose their jobs. And if this is a Hollywood production, and there were no bullets flying around, then this way, even if it should get blown wide open, that they stage this, what can you convict them of? Are there laws against screaming fire in movie theaters in Vegas? Because basically that's almost all you can really get them for. You know, they cause a ruckus, causing a panic in the middle of a crowded place. And people might have gotten stomped on. And there's probably people who got at least trampled to death in this crowd because they were terrified. So I'm, I would think there should be at least a few people that did die, even if they weren't killed with bullets, and the people that were supposedly sent to hospitals that we don't have evidence for on that either. We don't have any coroner's reports that people really died out of this. Uh, none of the evidences are showing up to prove this. There's also the footage that I saw just again yesterday as well of a couple of fellows who were in the MGM Grand shooting uh, a clip aimed at the, at the Hooters Hotel uh, just across the street from them, and something like 13 ambulances showed up. And I'll, I'll put that on the screen too. You can watch the amp. Now, now you speed it up. You can watch it better. So I'll speed it up for you too. And you you could see the ambulances showing up and leaving, but you never see them putting gurneys into the ambulances, which is strange because on the news there was a reporter that caught one of the gals in Hooters who claimed there was tons of people in there that were sh shot and dying in there. And let me play that for you here real quick, too. This is just the audio for that. Shonda Bennett was working last night at the Hooters Casino Hotel in Las Vegas when the shooting started. That casino's close to the concert venue where last night's attack happened. Shonda Bennett is a blackjack dealer. She had two players at her table when the shot started. She says she put the cover on her table and then hid underneath. And then people started running into her casino, people who were running away from the shooting. She described it to me earlier today when I talked to her on the phone. There was no plan of evacuation or action whatsoever. Like we had no idea what the hell we were supposed to do. Some of the girls ran out into the chaos. They ran out of the front doors. Some of the people you work with. Yeah, you could hear the gunshots outside. So when you're going through this and you're at work, I mean, literally, we're in Las Vegas, so it's like, do I lose my job? Like, what do you do? Like, how much do they carry? Like, this is a 24-hour city. You know what I mean? There's no excuses for yeah. them to not open their doors. You get what I'm saying? Uh -huh. So while all of this is going on, I'm like, do I leave? Do I stay? But I'm seeing people coming in with lip wounds in their bodies. There's people with busted knees everything like it's it was just horrible there's blood everywhere you have people hiding under the tables of the casino like literally in the pit <laughs> normally like i don't know if you ever gamble before but you know nobody can come in the middle of the pit we mm -hmm. had people everywhere they were at near the cage with us so the door that we go in to like count our money we had them in there with us they were back, were back in the employee dining room they were they were everywhere they were in hallways they were everywhere how many people do you think? I mean, did you see? People? I saw at least 400 people. How many wounded people? It was at least 70 wounded people. I mean, we had Metro all out in the front. There were people, there were bodies in the front of the casino that was just laying there. People that ran from the venue, they just died right there. So what else did you do? So you, you hid under your table for a while, then you got up, then you heard the gunshots, and you got back down on the floor. I got back down on the floor and then this is when people are still running in like this then this is when people are still running in like this lasted for a good 20 25 minutes it had to it, it probably longer than that but the amount of people that was running in was all night 
So now back to the Hooters clip here. You, you see the ambulance is coming and going, but there's nothing that shows that anybody's going in and out of the backs of these ambulances. They're not loading people in on gurneys. So what was really taking place there? Plus, if they're mortally wounded, this is almost two blocks, and a, two and a half blocks, three blocks away from the event where they would have been shot. People, if they're dying of gunshot wounds, they're not going to be able to walk that far, especially all of them in one big group to go there. No, the ambulances were reaching a much closer place too. So there was no need for them to come to Hooters. This was another spot. They were, FEMA and, and the other groups were conducting a giant fake scenario. They were at least conducting drills, and that part can be proven as well. All I can say is, folks, there may have been some real shooters. There may not have been. And this is too early in the game to tell for sure. But I will say this one thing. I don't trust the whole system, the whole machinery system that's based on deceit. If it's not based on the Father and your love of the truth, it's based on a greed system, a money system, and all that's going to be driven not by love, not by truth, but driven by what? money, lust for power, these different things, it's not going to be driven by love. So those of us who should be coming out from among that system will be blessed. Those who do not and want to continue living in that world are going to continue to see things like this in their lives until this spiritual battle is won one way or the other and is not going to be a lukewarm. The Bible says that in a lot of different ways, most especially, most of you know, Revelation 3.16. If you're lukewarm, he's going to spew you out. But again, if you're not going by his will, his laws, his commandments on how to love one another, then of course, you can't even pray to him. He that turneth away his ear from hearing the law, meaning the Father's law, not man's law, he that turneth away his ear from hearing the law, even his prayer shall be an abomination. Proverbs 28.9. So, folks, this stuff is very deep. This world's getting much, much worse, and it's in our own land now. It's almost like it's almost like we're looking at what was going in, what was taking place in Israel and Beirut and stuff 20, 30 years ago. It's now in America, folks. It's it's not terrorists from Iraq. It's not terrorists from Afghanistan. It's not a bunch of terrorists from a cave with box cutters. It's a bunch of terrorists from the banks. They're doing this to us. And whether it's real guns or not, it's terror. It's terror. They are terrorizing people, and they're terrorizing us, and it's time to stop it. And the only way to stop it is to get on our knees and to ask our Heavenly Father for forgiveness for the sins we've been contributing to things like what they do in Vegas every day. Folks, let's help one another, encourage one another to get back to the Bible, get back to the Father's truth, get back to His laws and His commandments to teach us how to love one another. And perhaps we could turn all of this around. This is Dwayne. I thank you so much for your time. I'm going to pray every single one of you will have a heart for wanting to do this with us. Blessings to you all. Love.